Everything you need to know about Miami-Dade County, known for Pitbull, Trick Daddy, sports cars, and of course Latin music and influence, this city is world-renowned for its cultural influence, but what's the city of Miami looking like today? And not just the city of Miami, the whole Miami-Dade County. County-wide, what's it looking like right now? Of course, in the past, Miami-Dade has struggled with crime, influxes of immigrants, all these things have reshaped the city of Miami and the entire Dade County as well. What is happening right now in Dade County? How has the county been changing for the better or for the worse? On today's video, we're gonna tell you everything you need to know about what's going on in Miami right now. The United States is in the middle of an addiction crisis. Every year, over 100,000 Americans are dying from overdoses. Miami-Dade County has the lowest drug overdose rate of anywhere in the state of Florida. Miami-Dade is a third, almost a quarter of the drug overdoses per capita. You might think it's because it's a county that's like 70% Hispanic and Hispanics are not overdosing at the same rate as the white population, but you'll be surprised to know that the white population in Miami-Dade County is overdosing at a rate of less than 10 per 100,000. So even the white people in Miami-Dade County are not overdosing. Now, there's a few theories behind that. One of them is that the substances that people use in Miami are not as dangerous as what they're using in other places. Miami has a lot of addictive substances. You can smell it driving through the city, but these substances are not as deadly as what's going on in other places. So culturally, it is possible that there is a lot of addiction in Miami, but it's not the type of addiction that's killing people. But overall, it's a known fact that the Hispanic community is proportionally less likely to be addicted anyways, and Miami County being largely Hispanic, Hispanic is the largest race in this county, by the way, 2.6 million people live in this county, it's the largest county in Florida, the vast majority of these people are Hispanic, and these are individuals who are just simply not drawn to a lifestyle of addiction. Miami is a very expensive city. People here have to work many long hours, and thus, people don't have a lot of free time to hang out and do those things with their friends. Their lives are very busy, very expensive, very complicated. People here are actually trying to do something with their lives. Miami also attracts a lot of very young, successful people who move here because the city has a hip vibe reputation. Unfortunately, things in Miami-Dade County haven't been going perfect. After COVID, a lot of people moved to Miami-Dade County. Analytics for crime started to drop. It really looked like things in Miami were going in the right direction. And then all of a sudden, analytics in the last year have taken a turn for the worse. Miami actually was safer than St. Petersburg, Orlando, Tampa, and Jacksonville by homicide rate. And sadly, it's back up again. Florida is now dealing with Miami having the second highest homicide rate of the large cities just right after Jacksonville. Miami, why, why Miami? Everything was going perfect and then things just seemed to take a dive for the worst. I was recently in Miami and I can say that this trip in Miami compared to the previous trip, things have really deteriorated. The homeless population visible in the streets of Miami now seems to have increased. The homicide rate has increased and it just like looks trashier than before. And it's crazy because Miami had really been moving in the right direction. And I feel like Miami-Dade County as a whole, especially like the western suburbs of Miami, were clean and safe areas. But I recently went to Kendall, Kendall West, areas that have a reputation of being clean, nice suburbs. And I actually felt like it was like, is it getting a little trashy or what? And it really is. Miami just started moving in the wrong direction. Could it be since everything else is expensive? prices of Miami perhaps are no longer keeping people out since after all everything got expensive so you might as well live somewhere nice. Miami's prices are no longer able to keep the riffraff out because since everybody else got expensive Miami is no longer that different than everybody else. It's possible that that really high price tag is what was keeping people from moving to Miami but everybody else getting expensive means that just about everybody can move to Miami now. A lot of people have moved to Miami that speak English. So Hispanic population is still the largest group in Miami, but English is starting to become more common. Now, there are still entire sections of Miami, like the city of Hialeah, Southwest Miami, and even some of the Southwest suburbs where the population speaks predominantly Spanish. If you're an English speaker, you're gonna struggle to live in Miami to this day. 
it's definitely changing. There's starting to be small pockets of white population growing in the Miami area, Miami Springs, along US 1 and South Miami, and of course along the coast, you're starting to see a lot more English speaking people, but you still need Spanish to live in Miami. As somebody who migrated to the United States myself, I'm not big on talking down on new groups of migrants, and I do believe that most people that come to the United States have good intentions, but I have to admit that some of the new immigrants that are coming to Miami are just a little bit more criminal minded than the previous generations, or at least it's a bigger, more noticeable problem now. To be specific, I could say anybody coming from Central America and South America right now just isn't the same type of immigrant that came in previous years. They're coming from different parts of the world and they're coming for different reasons. The influx of Venezuelans at first brought a lot of wealth and the area of Doral is wealthy, safe, clean. This is an area where Donald Trump has his golf courses, there's some military government stuff as well. It's just a clean, safe area. But recently, the new wave of Venezuelans are more desperate and they're coming for different reasons. The first wave of uh, Venezuelan migrants were people who had money escaping communism and escaping a dictatorship and all that. Well, now the new wave are just people who the system isn't working over there and they're like just desperate people leaving that country now. And well, the same thing happened with Cubans. The first wave of Cubans that came were the rich, more aristocrat type people that had more money and more investments, better education. It was a great representation of what was to come. But as the generations pass and pass and pass, the quality of the people coming from these countries deteriorates. It's longer people with money fleeing bad countries. It's like the normal people that are just escaping and a lot of them are leaving for different reasons. So now you're finding that the new waves of immigrants that are hitting Miami are just different and not in a good way. In fact, the current wave of Venezuelans that are migrating into the United States are so unruly that even the Mexican cartels get irritated at having to traffic them into the United States. They are simply people who struggle to follow directions. They're very entitled. They think the world owes them everything. They are absolutely unwilling to pay for anything. And this isn't something I'm making up. There's actually people who make reports about migrant crossings. You know, they'll blog their whole travels. And usually they'll mention that the Venezuelans were a lot of trouble. When other people migrate to the United States from other countries, they just kind of just try to get here without causing any havoc. But it seems like the Venezuelans leave a trail of destruction across Central America. They are unruly. And when they get here in the United States, they kind of expect everything for free. Now, again, the first wave of Venezuelan migrants were not like this. These were rich people, very well educated. Venezuela used to be the richest country in all of Latin America. And these were the elites that came here with all their investments, and they've created a great community. Doral is one of the safest cities in the United States, lowest homicide rates. It's a great place. Now, I'm not going to sit here and spread all this Fox News garbage that people are spreading about Venezuelans. The vast majority of these people are great people, leaving a very messed up situation. Definitely not going to sit here and spread the train that I waffing or they're all gang members. And I don't believe in all that crap. I, I meet these people. They're normal people with good intentions. It's not the way media portrays it. OK, but there are enough bad ones coming over here to where they're starting to change the landscape of Miami in a bad way. For example, Doral, Florida, which is like the Venezuelan part of Miami. It's like less than 100,000 people and most of them are Venezuelan there. It's like a Venezuelan city. Donald Trump's got his golf courses there. There's some government stuff there. Their homicide rate is like three per 100,000. That's extraordinarily low. That's less than half the national average. So they've created a great city. In fact, they went for like four to five years where they had zero homicides. Then one person got killed in Doral. And it was by a gang, okay, it was by that Venezuelan gang, and it made national headlines. And everybody's like, dangerous Doral, Florida, where the Venezuelan gangs are killing people. You know what they forgot to mention? That Doral, Florida hadn't had a single murder in like three to four years, despite having like 80,000 people, which makes it the safest city in the entire freaking country. But they don't tell you that. So I'm not buying into the whole mainstream media garbage of, you know, one single crime makes literally made national headlines. You know what never made national headlines? The fact that it was the safest city in America for three years. A wave of YouTubers have actually gone in and made videos about scams and all these different things happening in Doral. And they're really painting Doral as this like crime ridden place. When in reality, if you actually look at their crime analytics, it is 
remarkably one of the safest cities in the entire country. So that's the thing, too, is that there's this social media and political agenda to just demonize these immigrant communities. But when you actually look at the analytics for these communities, it's actually better than average. And it's starting to be like that for a lot of immigrant communities because there's so much drug addiction in the United States right now. There's so much homicide, addiction, and problems in the United States right now that immigrant groups off the bat have better analytics than people who've already been here. So without buying into these Fox News narratives, some of the people that are coming now are just more arrogant, more just ignorant, less likely to acclimate than other groups in the past. And that presents a problem for Miami, a city that's trying to reshape itself for the better, not for the worse. Now, Miami has always had stagnant people that move to Miami and they say, I'm literally never going to learn English. Take the city of Hialeah, for example, which is like 96% Cubans. Individuals who live here have created one of the safest communities in the United States. Again, Hialeah, their homicide rate is less than half the national average. Homeless population in Hialeah is like very small. They, they've eliminated problems that other cities in the United States struggle to deal with. We have very low homicide rates, very low population of homeless, very low addiction rates, and very low overdose rates. In a lot of ways, Hialeah is really admirable. Now, in other ways, population density, for example, and just how difficult it is to make money there, then they're pushing towards the worst parts of anything. So, you have to understand that Miami is a place of extremes. In some ways, it's great, and in some ways, it's very challenging. But at the end of the day, it's like 2.6 million people, and the vast majority of them are Hispanic. So that's like the first hurdle you have to hop over if you're moving to Miami. It's a city that is Hispanic, and it will continue to be Hispanic. Whites have started to move in, and unfortunately, those whites that are moving in have really driven the price up for the locals because most of the whites that are moving in are higher income earning. Now, a lot of them are starting to realize that they can't make as much money in Miami as they used to in New York or Connecticut, and they're starting to move back. Now, some of the influencers and YouTubers that moved to Miami during the COVID era were phony, cringe type people. I mean, I saw some of these individuals that moved to Miami, and in, a lot of them are now moving back, and it's like most people in Miami are probably glad these people left. They're really cringe type creators. Not gonna lie, creepy at best. They put themselves out as very knowledgeable realtors and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, they'll be moving out in two years. And sure enough, they're gone now. In fact, one of them even ended up being a serial killer on the news for randomly shooting homeless people. So on one end, they wanted to put themselves out as like all these New Yorkers are moving here. We're intellectuals and this is the city of the future and real estate prices are booming in Miami. And, and I was like, yeah, they'll be leaving in two years. And here are two years on the road. And yeah, exactly. A lot of them are leaving back to New York and their short lived Miami real estate adventures came to a very rapid freaking end. Miami continues to be an incredible city with a lot of culture, and the real problem with Miami is that the math simply doesn't add up. The prices are unrealistic for the incomes. Incomes did improve in Miami greatly, but they improved because the people that were moving here had other sources of income. They quickly found that there weren't jobs here, no crap. Cost of living astronomical, different changes in the state's laws are making life really crappy and difficult. So it's not a surprise that these people are starting to leave. But some of them stayed behind, and they kind of probably screwed up analytics for the worse. Now, Northwest Miami has mostly been African American. And a lot of the African American community has just been getting pushed into Broward County. However, the pockets that remain African American, sadly, most of the African Americans with money have moved like north of Miami Lakes in the South Broward County and have left just the poor inner city African Americans and like Liberty City, like the pockets of African American that remain in Miami look like Detroit or Baltimore. It's just inner city poverty. And continually, Hispanics from Hialeah are moving eastward. You would see neighborhoods that used to be 95% black back in the day are now like 50% Hispanic. So Hispanics continue to encroach on Northwest Miami. 
most of the blacks that had money have moved into Broward County and the ones that are remaining in the pockets of African Americans in Northwest Miami are neighborhoods that sadly look like something straight out of Baltimore. A lot of wealthy South Americans, Argentinians, Paraguayans, Peruvians, like the more upper crust of South America, you know, like Argentinians and stuff like that. Yeah, the Chileans and stuff like that. They've been buying a lot of the really expensive real estate along the coast of Miami. A lot of money from other countries has been buying up Miami. Ecuador recently got destabilized. Ecuador used to be one of the safest countries in South America. Things have changed. Parts of Mexico continue to destabilize. So as Latin America destabilizes, I mean, Colombia, Venezuela, Dominican Republic, just all Cuba's not even out of the question. Haiti recently, like at least there was, you know, some affluence in Haiti. And, and it's just like all these Latin America, Latin America is out of control, by the way, if you didn't know that. Latin America is just absolutely in uh, gang wars, militias, uh, cartels. Like Latin America is completely out of control. And anybody that has money in Latin America has moved it into Miami. Even if they're just buying something and they're not even living it, at least it's in Miami and not in a country that is quickly destabilizing. All this influx of money from other countries has made real estate in Miami like literally impossible and unfortunately vacancy. Back to those whack YouTube, New York, and Connecticut realtors that all moved to Miami. They spread so much misinformation. These people really had no idea where all this money was coming from or even why it was landing in Miami. In reality, the way things are happening in South Florida, specifically Miami-Dade County, have been really misconstrued by the information people are putting out. See, they wanted to make you believe that people from New York and all these places were moving to Miami by the masses. Because it was like a bubble for them. But unfortunately for them, the reality is that much of the money in Miami continues to come from Latin America. And it's not bad money. It's just people who have money and are trying to put it there because it's safer. So all this package of misinformation, both on who's coming over here, why they're coming over here, their intentions in coming over here, there has been a lot of misinformation. And I don't really understand why... There are so many misleading ideas out there about what's happening in Miami and the growth, but Miami has really been a victim of misinformation. So, so many people trying to make Miami look bad or distorting the reality of how these economical changes are happening, where the money's coming from, who's moving to Miami. There's just been an onslaught of misinformation about what's actually happening in Miami by people who clearly have no idea what the crap they're talking about. As of right now, Miami-Dade has, again, the lowest drug overdose rate of anywhere in the state of Florida. This is really a place of hardworking, industrious people, bums, junkies, people with low expectations and efforts aren't going to last too long in a city this expensive and this difficult. And if you watch the news, you'll see that even police officers have been arrested for beating up the homeless. There's even been several cases of random people shooting the homeless. It's like to the point where like the homeless and the junkies understand that if they move to Miami, it's kind of like a small town rule. It's not like they're going to, you know, law enforcement and due process and this and that. No, dude, if you move to Miami, you sleep outside of a business. Somebody may actually put a price on you and just say, you know what, make this person disappear. And it could be a cop. It could be a gangster. But at the end of the day, like Miami isn't the place you just go to and then decide you're going to loiter in a parking lot. You know, in the United States, due process is a thing. And in the county of Miami, Dade, there's not a lot of due process with making people disappear who are wanted. Simply, Miami Dade is a Hispanic county, and a drug, a drug addiction and junkiness isn't a Hispanic problem. So you're not going to go to Miami now with your, you know, U.S. <laughs> and there's no nice way of putting this, but it's it's an American native-born problem, and you're not going to go to a Hispanic community and bring a problem to it that isn't theirs. Hispanics are the minority and you know Hispanics don't have a homeless problem so you're not going to move to Miami to be homeless because the people there aren't going to tolerate it now it exists but these people live very dangerous lives and at any moment if you cross on the wrong person they'll put a price on you and make you disappear 
It's just not a problem that the Hispanics want to deal with. Like, in the United States, homelessness is difficult to eradicate. But in Miami, they'll eradicate you. Due process probably isn't the reason why there aren't too many homeless people in Miami-Dade County. Again, there's just some way of operation of things getting done in Miami that has kept a lot of the bad elements out. You know, and that in itself is like, okay, you've created a city that has, you know, like Miami, I know people have a reputation in their minds when they hear Miami, they think it's like a Detroit or a Baltimore. Dude, Miami is literally one of the safest large cities in the country. Right now, large cities in the United States are just out of control. And to be fair, the vast majority of the homicides in Miami are happening amongst the African-American community. If, like, let's say the African-American part of Miami were to become its own city, the remainder of Miami would be, like, literally the safest city in the United States because all of the homicides and murder, or most of it, the bulk of it, is happening around the African-American community. So that's kind of happening over there. Literally, the, the, let's give you an idea, like Hispanics, for example, like Americans tolerate homelessness and like if somebody turns 18, they kick them out of the house and they're going to be a bum. That's their problem. That's very different from the Hispanic culture, like Cubans in particular, which are the largest group in Miami. Dude, you're not just going to be a bum like you we didn't come to America to be a bum, even like criminals understand that if they're going to be a criminal, they have to be a sophisticated criminal. It's like, you may have watched Tony Montana. I, I really hate the way they depict Cubans in that movie. But there's one thing that is kind of correct, which is, you know, didn't come to America to be a dishwasher, didn't come to America to be a complete freaking bum. You came here to be something. You didn't just come here to be a freaking addict on a sidewalk. You came here to make something out of yourself. And, you know, that anybody who kind of misleads themselves in the wrong direction is like socially outcast by the community and you know sometimes they even get beat up for it it's like you're, you're, you didn't just come here to be a piece of crap which is very different from the american culture which the american culture is something along the lines of well you turn 18 you're an adult now do whatever you want but within the hispanic communities it's not like that within the hispanic communities there's like an expectation that you are a first generation American. You have to do something with your life. Now, a lot of long term Miami Dade residents really have got the crap out of there. I live in Sarasota and I see people from Miami moving here all the time Cubans, Venezuelans, Nicaraguans. Just everybody in general has realized that Miami, the cost of living doesn't make sense. And, you know, a lot of these people are leaving Miami just because they can't afford it. Now, some of them can't afford it, but they realize that economically it's not really a package that makes sense to keep living under. So you're starting to see now, um, you know, the Fort Myers metropolitan area, huge influx of Hispanics moving in. Same thing for uh, Sarasota, where I live now. You know, Jacksonville, Florida didn't really have a Hispanic population. There's actually entire neighborhoods in Jacksonville now that are predominantly Hispanic. Most of them are coming from Miami. So people have left Miami Hispanics have left Miami, and unfortunately, if that trend continues, then Miami is definitely going to get refilled in with other demographics. Those demographics are going to mean more homelessness, more addiction, and higher homicide rates because, well, there's nothing good demographically better than Miami. In other words, nobody has better demographics than Miami, so the people from Miami move out, what moves in can't be better because there isn't a better analytical demographic than what's in Miami already. Again, extraordinarily low overdose death rates. You're just not going to find that anywhere else. So if Miami continues to have, you know, people leave Miami, you know, especially people that own real estate, they're going to move to a somewhere else and the real estate they're going to buy in central Florida is going to be much more affordable. If this trend continues to happen, eventually What's going to move into Miami is going to bring new analytical changes. These aren't going to happen overnight. Like you've seen the homicide rate increase a little. You might see the drug overdose rate increase a little. Simply put, you're taking away the good people that had those good analytics and slowly replacing them with people that come from other places and have analytics that are worse. It looks like the Florida real estate market is finally starting to cool down. With that... We can start to see Miami maybe stabilize a little bit. And the problem really is 
and again, there's just no nice way of saying this, is that the people that have moved to Miami simply demographically, analytically, are much more prone to criminal activity than the people that were there before. And the people that were there before are moving to places that are more affordable. And the state of Florida's had a lot of changes. Cubans used to be the largest group of immigrants or, you know, outside people moving or Cubans. Like, you had a million Cubans. There's actually more Puerto Ricans in Florida now than there are Cubans. Most of them are around the Orlando area. So Central Florida became expensive because of the influx of people from Puerto Rico, especially after Hurricane Maria. A lot of those people had money. Puerto Rico is getting expensive, so they're selling real estate as well. And now Central Florida became expensive, so the options for affordability are really limited. And the people that are leaving Miami are moving to communities that simply don't offer the same things that Miami does. Miami has changed rapidly. Gentrification has literally wiped away a lot of the real essence of Miami. Now, where the Haitian neighborhoods and the Cuban neighborhoods met near Opalaka Hialeah was the Opalaka Hialeah flea market. This was like a staple of the area. It's gone today. The Opalaka flea market is completely gone, you know. And it's just one example of how they've decapitated the identity of Miami and replaced it with this gentrification. Neighborhoods that are bad are extraordinarily expensive now. And this has kind of not been great for Miami. It's been great in that, you know, a lot of investment has moved in. The skyline's been transformed. But now, you know, the next big skyscrapers are happening in St. Petersburg's getting a new skyscraper. Jacksonville's getting a new skyscraper. So a lot of the great investments are not exactly going just into Miami now. Now you're seeing cities like Jacksonville and St. Petersburg, a lot of new high-rise skyscraper massive investments are no longer going solely to Miami. They're going to other places. Florida is a state that has a huge Hispanic influence. And cities like Orlando, Miami, Tampa have always had a large Hispanic influence. And gentrification only strips away, unfortunately, the African-American element. Because Hispanic element always continues to refresh itself with new people. Sometimes those people have a lot of money. In the case of countries like Venezuela, Ecuador, when they become destabilized, people with money leave. But unfortunately, the African-American communities are just getting pushed further and further into smaller places that are more affordable. And that is a solid element of the culture of Miami. Now, with that, too, comes the fact that the African-American community, it's not a secret. We know they're more propensed to homicides. They're more propensed to crime. And I don't understand why this hasn't changed. In the case of Miami, a Hispanic with no high school will make more money than an African-American with a degree. Now, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but the point being that in Miami, the African-American community economically hasn't been treated right. And that's not a secret. It's really been bad for African-Americans economically in Miami. It's been too difficult. It's been challenging at best. Now Hispanics are moving into neighborhoods that were predominantly black and you know with gentrification you would have thought that it would be white people moving into those areas no it's been hispanics that have been pushing out the african-americans haitians which are also black they're moving into broward county you know and uh it's like been difficult to see from from my perspective how the northwest side of miami has become more crime ridden than ever more compact in other words the pockets of african-american communities that are left are really small and they're really really struggling okay high incidence of crime continue in these neighborhoods these neighborhoods in miami that are african-american are like a whole different world you know all this money from latin america pushing into the latino neighborhoods a lot of the latino areas are actually rich wealthy suburbs for most of dade county especially when you get further west but the African-American community here hasn't benefited at all. You know, not even gentrification has been the problem. It's like you would think like in Broward County, gentrification was a problem. But in Miami-Dade County, not even gentrification has been the element that's removed the African-Americans. It's just been Miami's got so expensive that Latinos have moved into those neighborhoods. And, you know, basically it's made Miami-Dade more Hispanic. It's made 
Broward County more black, it's made Palm Beach County more white, and it's like if the, these three counties have just auto-segregated in the last few years. Now, Alapata has also changed incredibly. This area has a large Dominican neighborhood, but there are now black Cubans coming to the United States. Now, for the most part, most Cubans are white, but recently, you know, Cuba is like 40% black. Black Cubans, which never used to leave Cuba, have started to leave Cuba. And now this area of Northwest Miami, that's like, let's say, just north of the river, for example, is a Dominican neighborhood. Black Cubans are moving into this area. And now you're having like this merge of black Cubans with Dominicans that are kind of forging a single identity. It's happening with the music, the culture, the food. Cubans and Dominicans are kind of merging uh, and creating kind of like a Cuban-Dominican culture that hasn't really existed. You know, Dominicans have mostly been in the Northeast. Now this area has become vastly Dominican. Black Cubans were never an element. Black Cubans are now moving to Miami, and they're not really mixing with the white Cubans. They're more drawn to, like, the Dominicans. So now the black Cubans that are moving in are kind of mixing in with the Dominican neighborhoods, and they're kind of creating... I think a considerable movement uh, musically, for example, it hasn't taken off, you know, within mainstream, but at least within Latin music, you're starting to see this fusion. A lot of the Cuban black artists left Cuba. They're all in Miami now, and a lot of them are starting to do Dominican style music. So it's been interesting to see how Cubans, black Cubans now are an element in Florida and how they're mixing not with Cubans, but with Dominicans and kind of forging a, a completely new culture, you could say, if not probably an ethnicity in the future as these groups start to intermarriage. But I just find it perplexing that as the new groups of black Cubans come to Miami, they're not mixing with the Cuban neighborhoods that are white. They're going to the Dominican neighborhoods that are on the edge of the black communities. So perhaps it's again another phase of Miami reshaping its culture. I don't think that Miami being so transient is really good for the city's future. It's nothing wrong with periodic changes, but, you know, the African-American influence is gone. The Haitian influence is gone. The Dominican influence is growing. Black Cubans came out of nowhere. And, uh, you know, people from other states that were kind of, you know, the white population was decreasing in day. Now it's starting to grow. But what I don't like is the fact that Miami has been kind of transient you know groups took a long time you know you had the haitians they were there for a long time the cubans were there for a long time but it seems like recently as all these other con countries go into conflicts and different changes happen in other countries miami's become transient and the people that are from miami the blacks left the cubans left and these all new groups of people are in miami to where it just isn't the same city that it used to be and I'm not saying that change is wrong, but I'm pretty sure eventually some of these groups are going to go to other places and form other communities, and that's going to make Miami a transient place. And with that, it seriously threatens the culture of the city. It will always be a happening place, okay? It will always be a place where new people move to and new cultures arrive and, and, and change everything, I don't think that's going to continue to to happen, but what was the Miami of the past that made it a safe city could pro progress into perhaps Miami having higher crime rates in the future. The people that do decide to stay in Miami, these new groups are just transforming Miami in a way that it took a long time for these cities and municipalities to have nationally the lowest analytics for homicides homelessness and addiction that's not something that just is granted that's something that took decades of communities and building and families and all that and it seems like those people are leaving miami and the new people that are moving to miami perhaps aren't going to be there that long take for example colombians colombians are very transient you know they go to the cities that have the best analytics at the time if a city doesn't work for Colombians, they just simply hop up. Like Colombians, um, a lot of the groups that are in Miami now are the Latinos that have the highest incomes. Chileans, Argentinians, Colombians, they're like the top 
you know, of the Latinos when it comes to income. They're also very transient. They seek out areas that have good income analytics. So those are groups of people that are here today. And if things aren't working, they'll move to another city if things are better. And that constant rotation of people doesn't really long-term guarantee that Miami will be a good place. Because what I've seen in Florida is that when a place becomes so transient, it leads to vacancies. And those vacancies sometimes get filled in with the absolute bottom of society. Perfect example being Lee County, Florida. We've seen Lee County, Florida, when one move, uh, one group of people moves out, that void becomes worse and worse and worse. And I feel like Miami, it could happen where that void and constant rotation of people will eventually just leave behind a group of people that have very little in common because they're so diverse that it really just no longer gives Miami that kind of solid community feel, which is what led to those extraordinarily low analytics. Now, not to say that places that are extremely diverse can't have low crime analytics. Take Toronto, for example. Toronto is very diverse, and Toronto has very low crime analytics, but Toronto also has a lot of things that Miami doesn't. There's a lot more filters in Canada of who can move to that place and who can't, while Miami seems to be a complete free-for-all where people move in and a lot of them, legality doesn't matter. You know, it just seems like, you know, there's a lot of, uh, I don't know, it's no real nice way of saying a lot of things we're talking about today. But, you know, and I hate to say this, but it just seems like, you know, like Cubans, for example, the wet foot, dry foot law doesn't exist anymore. Cubans that come now can become illegal can be illegal, can get deported. It's just there's no filter in who can land in Miami. And unfortunately, as this narrative of demonizing these immigrant groups is being spread through the media, it's forcing those groups into places like Miami because at least there, there's already an established Latino community. Now, that Latino community is starting to look at other immigrants the same way that People in other parts of the United States look at them. Interesting because these are immigrants looking at immigrants and saying you shouldn't be here, but you're an immigrant too. Regardless, it's the economical power of acquisition that these people come with that makes them be able to stay in Miami. It's people that now have money from Latin America and whether they're legal or not, they can do a lot of things. And sometimes with that money, they can get apartments, they can get vehicles, they can get fa false documentations, they can get lawyers, they can really make things to where they can use their power of acquisition to remain in Miami, land in Miami, and let's be honest, criminal enterprise has grown tremendously in Latin America, and Miami has just unfortunately just been plagued with a lot of scams, a lot of criminal activities, nothing new in the realm of Miami, this has always been happening but now it's not just like one or two groups. It used to be like Cubans, but it was, you know, Cubans, Colombians, and Haitians. Bro, it's not Cubans, Colombians, and Haitians. You have like 40 different countries, and among those 40 different countries are like 40 different mobs back home. And all these people are all doing all types of shady crap. It's turning Miami into what I think is like like a little, um, what's this country in Africa where all the scammers, like Nigeria. It's turning Miami into a little Nigeria of scams, frauds. And it, it it's just a crappy situation for Miami. And I feel like the misinformation campaign that's going around the United States to demonize these immigrant groups is forcing all these people to Miami that really would have probably not have chosen Miami if that campaign didn't exist against them. But we can assume if countries in Latin America continue to remain destabilized, that an onslaught of people entering the United States will come to Miami. Now, it's not that the number of people coming has changed. It's that the places they're going to are more limited than ever, and the opportunity of those people to become legal are less than ever. The United States always had 30 million illegal Mexicans, and it didn't make a difference, but now it's not 30, illegal, 30 million illegal Mexicans that are coming here temporarily. Now it's like 30 different countries that are sending a million people. And now you have 30 different nationalities. And these people are all from different countries. And they're all dealing with different 
situations, different legal hassles. It's really becoming a mess with immigration. You know, many years ago, it was so simple. Okay, you had 30 million Mexicans that are illegal. By the way, their country is right next door. By the way, they're not planning to stay here. By the way, their country is not destabilized. You know that they're only coming here to work and then leave. But now, you're starting to see people land in Miami from all these weird countries and all these weird places. And you're just like, okay, you're not legal here. You can't get sent back to a country that's destabilized. Take a look at the current situation in Haiti right now. Like, what the crap is in these people's future? Now, a lot of these Cubans, for example, would have been legal if they had came in years ago. Now they're not granted legal status in the United States. So all these changes just means that the people that are coming, which nothing stops them from coming, are now in kind of a legal limbo. What does that mean for these communities? It means that these people are not going to be able to assert themselves and start businesses. They're remaining transient. They're just kind of there in a ghostly form. There's no real future planning for these people. These people aren't going to get married, have kids, have families, and try to like assert themselves in the United States. What these people are doing is they're just working like animals and stacking up money. Money that could stay in the United States, could leave. Like Who the crap knows of all these changes what the future of Miami is going to be and what the future of these people that are coming to Miami now is going to be. Because when Haitians came to Miami back then, they knew they were going to stay here. When Cubans came to Miami, they knew they were going to stay here. The people that are coming now, it's like a question mark. It's not, there's no, you're going to send people back to a country that's destabilized. Uh, and if you send them back, they have money, they can just come back again. Like, yeah, there's definitely new windows of possibilities now that didn't exist, making Miami more transient than ever, and making the future of the people that land in Miami, again, more transient, less predictable. That doesn't create better communities. What creates great communities is like when the Cubans came and look what they created, Hialeah, you know, productive, low homicide rates, low addiction rates. Haitians did well. You know, Haitians are, contribute greatly to Florida's economy. I'm um, not sure if you're aware of this, but uh, hospitals, hotels, restaurants, uh, Haitians contribute to working jobs that most of us probably wouldn't want to get paid those salaries. Difficult jobs, Haitians contribute greatly to Florida's economy. I mean, yeah, and most of them are just really great, hardworking people. Uh, I Uber drive and I see Haitians, to, I'll, I'll pick them up from one job, take them to their second job. You know what I mean? Uh, when I pick up people that are from the United States, Uber driving, it's been an eye opening to Uber drive, by the way. It's not a lot of money in it, but the experiences and things that I'm learning from it are incredible. Like I pick up Americans and, you know, uh, half of them are drunk or stoned out of their minds. That's why they're in an Uber to begin with. Nothing wrong with drinking, by the way. It's great to drink and have a good time. But some of them are not happy drunk, if you know what I'm saying. I don't pick up Haitians that are not, I've never had a drunk or high Haitian. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. I've never had a drunk Haitian in my car or high Haitian or a drunk Venezuelan. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe some of those ones. But overall, the vast majority of the people that you're picking up from these countries that are, you know, Uber driving. Like, dude, I've literally picked up people from one job going to the next at three in the morning. These communities brought of Florida people that wanted to escape poverty in Cuba and Haiti, and they came and they created communities, and now they're moving on to other cities, and they're doing great for themselves. But I really have to put a question mark in the way immigration is working now in the United States is keeping these people in a never-ending limbo where they're never going to actually have legal status. They're never going to have like family reunification, which is a huge part of the success of Cuban and Haitians has been family reunification. It means, okay, I'm in the United States. I'm set up here. Can I claim somebody back home and bring them here and make them be legal? And now our whole family can be here. And now we're a family unit. We can all progress together. Yeah, none of that exists anymore. So what type of families and structures are you creating for the future of Miami with the new changes in immigration in the United States? You're not creating communities of the future it's kind of like you think about african americans you know uh they came from slavery 
Then, you know, the welfare system made sure that mothers couldn't live in the same house as the father to receive government benefits. So now most of them, you know, you end up with the baby mama situation. So she can get Section A, she can get food stamps. It means that the father can't be in the picture. So you have a whole generation that grew up without a father in the projects, which means the problems that we have in the African-American community today were created by the bad decisions and policies of yesterday. Well, dude, what do you think these new policies for immigration are doing? You're creating chaos for the future of these people in the United States with bad immigration policies. When in the past you had better immigration policies, look at the communities that Cubans and Haitians formed in Miami. Great communities with great contribution to the state. But those policies don't exist in the same way anymore. What do you think you're creating? Dude, you're creating something even worse than what was created within the African-American community that brought destruction to African-Americans to where this day, even generations have passed, and now the African-American community is just plagued with all of the load from the past, from slavery to, you know, all those things are still plaguing the African-American community today. Generations that grew up without family structure. That isn't the way immigrants used to come to the United States. Immigrants came with family structures, legal statuses that helped them create bright futures. But today, for some reason, they want to create, well, the new wave of African Americans is possibly even worse, is what you're creating now with these new immigrants that are coming here, and they're being marginalized possibly even more than what African American communities were. These are outright defamation campaigns when you look at the information that's being spread uh, about Venezuelans and Haitians and all these new groups that are coming now, even Cubans and Haitians don't have the same legal protections and statuses that they did in the past. And there's these misinformation campaigns about these people. People were believing it and running with it. These are now marginalized communities that didn't exist. Had these immigrants came with better policies, they would have had a bright future but you're not creating a bright future for the people that are coming now it's sad to say that the future of miami if it's under these current conditions is going to be a scary one and you know the plague of american overdoses and addiction has spread over into mexico and now the immigrants that are coming now you know the youth in particular they're picking up the music the same destructive subculture that has been plaguing the United States, you know, like the addiction of the white population, the music of the African Americans, all that that has destroyed African Americans and destroyed the white populations of the United States. If you look at the way Mexico was culturally maybe 20 years ago or 10 years ago and what Mexico is culturally today, these immigrant groups that are coming now, that are coming through Mexico and, you know, spreading through social media are the same destructive forces that have been working in America to destroy American society and corrupt it. Now that influence, which didn't exist, okay, like regional music, uh, cumbia, and all these genres of music that used to be about dancing, now they're making cumbias about being in a cartel. Now they're making cumbias about guns and drugs, okay? So this plague of American culture, the bad aspects of it, okay? There's great things about American culture. There's a plague of bad American culture, mostly distributed through music, social media, that has been plaguing the white and the black populations in the United States. Now those plagues are also working their way into Latin American culture, which means that the immigrants that are, immigrant groups that are coming now are not innocent. They have cell phones. They listen to the same music. They watch the same TV shows the same contamination of media that has been destroying America, propagation of addiction and lifestyles, that is now working its way into Latin American culture. When I first started to hear Spanish music start to carry the same lyrical content of American hip-hop rap and drugs and guns and all this garbage and gangs, bro, I told myself, in five, seven, eight years from now, you know, the, the same plague of addiction and gangs and violence that has been plaguing the American population is now going to spread into Latin America, which means that these Latin American groups, like when Cubans came here in Haiti, they came with problems from Cuba and Haiti, but they weren't already acclimated to the culture of crime of the United States. And the culture of crime of the United States is now, 
in the hands of every immigrant coming here. And, you know, to say the least, they, you know, it's not even disputed now that, like, the Venezuelans, for example, they are mixing with, you know, gangs that are already established in the United States. They're, they're, they're hopping to the forefront when they come over here when it comes to criminality. They're not in the background anymore. They're not carving out their own lane. Dude, they're hopping right into the lane and joining the ranks of American crime, plagued by the same problems of everybody here. It's a speeding right into destruction lifestyle. As soon as immigrants arrive here, they're already familiar with the lifestyles of crime in the United States. The culture, the lyrics are the same. Cubans and Haitians came here, and they didn't have that immediate infusion of all of the negative aspects of living in the United States. It was a progression, a progression that sometimes didn't terminate. But now, immigrant groups are coming, dude. They're exposed to the same lyrics, the same music. It wasn't culturally that uniform. And unfortunately, it's a propagation of the worst things in society that are coming straight into the hands of immigrants. Immigrants aren't coming here and becoming successful. They're coming here and they want to do the things and emulate the lifestyles of the criminals and bums of America. It just isn't the mentality that immigrants used to have in the past. All of that to say that I'm really afraid for the future of Miami due to the way immigration is working right now in the United States, how transient Miami has become and how the actual historical communities of Miami are literally being wiped away due to the cost of living, due to the fact that these communities have just found better places. That is what I'm thinking about Miami right now, and that's what I think you need to know about Dade County. It's a place that will always be a magnet to new immigrant groups, but these immigrant groups today are facing challenges because of technology, social media, globalization that didn't exist in the past. This is completely uncharted territory, and I think for the worst. Overall, living in Miami is fairly complicated to begin with. Expensive, and of course, you know, the weather, all that makes Miami kind of, it's an enjoyable place because of the warm weather. It's a fun place, but all these new variables coming into the picture just kind of, just, they're, they're looming over the city of Miami as of, if this is the future of the people that are coming to Miami, what could be said about the city's future? It's, it's questionable that anything good could come out of this circumstance. I'm like, oh, here's half a million Haitians. Okay, let's all build something. Here's half a million Cubans. Let's all build something. It's just like, here's a random mix of people from all over the world coming for completely different reasons. And, of course, already acclimated to the absolute worst aspects of culture in this country pertaining to the lifestyles of crime, literally acclimated to the worst of American culture by the moment they hit the ground. Yeah, not good.